girl was salvation. It sort of kicked some of the moral pedestal out from under feminism. DIY, um, queer, feminist, punk, um, self, do it together, DIT. For me, Right Girl is about um, taking some cultural space and being able to really express yourself. On one level, it's used as a genre of music, but I think it's more than that. I think it, it's a movement. In the United States, a woman is beaten every 19 seconds, and each day four women are killed by their batterers. And Riot Girl is a really important feminist movement that was founded by primarily uh, Kathleen Hanna. To me, Riot Girl was a really loose-knit group of people who wanted to bring feminism to punk rock. You got a hold of something that was like teaching you about just like tenets of the patriarchy. Riot Girl happened at the intersection of third wave feminism, which is in general this really broad movement in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, basically a resurgence of feminism, but from multiple different points of views, as opposed to thinking in terms of like a universal type of womanhood. <laughs> We started seeing things in Sassy Magazine back in the day um, with this term Riot Girl, realizing that, hey, there was other bands out there like us, you know, with a bunch of girls that technically kind of maybe don't know what we're doing, but we're, you know, getting out there and having a great time and saying what we want to say. I think a Riot Girl is loud, in your face, feminist punk. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember that being so powerful, what seemed to be kind of like a mix of like, kind of feminine presentation, just in your face aggressiveness. did was talk about bands and read fanzines and uh, go to shows. The zine is a great medium um, because it is so personal. You open it up and you instantly feel um, you're being shown things in a way that nobody else shows you. We wrote a fanzine called Girl Power. We were like, oh, what if we put those two words together? Because we kept talking about how girl equals weak and girl equals, you know, you throw like a girl. <laughs> what you're looking at here, they, I mean, this is the first Bikini Kill zine. I and love so this that is er, this is really, you know, early on uh, stuff. But, you know, you can sort of see even this earlier one, they have they, the, the slogan is, is coming this early about stop the J word jealousy from killing girl love. I really like to a zine called Wig Out by a band called Girl Trouble from Tacoma, Washington. That was a huge influence on me. Um, uh, Murder Can Be Fun, um, Jigsaw, Toby Vale zine. There was a rise of queer and trans activism. There was more fluidity in terms of self-identification of sexuality. <laughs> Um, largely, at, you know, especially in its inception, like, you know, white girls who were making, um, you know, making the fancies and making the music, and even though there was consciousness, it wasn't diverse. My friend Pearl in England, like, posted on my um, thing this picture that said, not all right girls are white, you know, and then Pearl posted, or, or girls. <laughs> A lot of people, but some would say, but you're a guy, how can you be a feminist? And that just is a sign of like um, ignorance. ignorance on the subject. It's a bummer when really, really great bands don't get the mention that they should and stuff. And especially for us, well, for me at least, um, 
bands that totally influenced us and also you know people like GB Jones and Homo Core and stuff which is what we came out of like that not being a knowledge is really frustrating my next guest is a little different not only is she uh, on the runways ladies and gentlemen also the lead singer for the Luna Chicks people couldn't figure out what kind of music we were or what we fit into so it was like any label that they could give us that had to do with women they would throw on top of us <laughs> The chicks weren't really a riot girl band, but you know what I mean? Like, we were, everybody's inspiring each other. People will be critical of the media co-opting riot girl, which in a lot of ways it did. But without the media, it wouldn't have gotten the word out to as many people as it did. I think it's beyond critique. <laughs> I think it's perfect just the way that it is. How does Riot Girl make me feel? Um, sick to my stomach. I feel upset about how it ended. I feel like I wish I would have stood up and taken a leadership role. Feminist is still a dirty word here, and that's wrong. I still see women who are feminists, who play music, who are really good at it, say like, oh, I'm not a feminist. And I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> Actually, yes, you are. Um, so I think, you know, like, own it. It's not a dirty word. It's not a bad word. It doesn't mean you hate men. It doesn't mean you want to cut somebody's dick off. But then I saw in Time Magazine, you know, um, Michelle Obama being called Girl Power, and I was like, wow. When Riot Girl was mentioned on Roseanne. Um, I will forever be upset that Bratwell Bill wasn't mentioned on the episode, but... <laughs> People have said through the years, Riot Girl's dad. Not for me! just start a band you know hopefully it'll be good and hopefully other people will be into it and maybe they'll think that they can do it or if we start a, a fanzine the same you know chain might might happen and that was that's kind of still how I live my life there's also um echoes of of riot girl that that continue to this day both in terms of people who are involved then who are still doing things and uh people who are currently doing musical and other projects that that drew inspiration from riot girl Two, I feel totally proud that um, what something that I was a small part of ended up having a really deep cultural impact, and um, I know that that's true. I know that it's true. 